Adam Lewis with 72 Hour Survival UK. Today I'm going to talk to you about some of the content of my 72 Hour Bag. Um, it's going to be broken down into several videos. Um, unfortunately I'm in, I'm in the process of moving house at the moment and um, quite short on funds so I've not got everything that I'd ideally like to have in my 72 Hour Bag. Or indeed the actual 72 Hour Bag I want. I'm going to be getting a, a new Max Position Bag which I'll do a review on uh, when I get it. But today what I'm going to talk about is uh, my core kit. Uh, and in the core kit I've got pretty much everything tool wise um, I would need, I believe, to survive 72 hours in an urban or wilderness situation um, following a natural disaster, civil unrest, uh, etc. So to start with, we'll just show you, you know, this is my 72 hour kit. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to pause the video, um, I'll lay everything out and we'll come back and I will go through all the items individually and have a little bit of a talk on them and we'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I've got all the items that were in the kit laid out. Now, um, first of all, uh, inside the front compartment here there's um, sort of slots here you can see for holding things. These are the items I had in there. First of all, um, is that on camera? Yeah. Okay. This is a sort of a botan. It's um, a martial arts weapon. So you can use it for self-defence in a survival situation. Unfortunately, you know, UK law says you can't carry them all the time on you. But to be honest, if you know everyone's kicking up and there's a riot, then well, you know, you take your life with your own hands on you. Uh, attached to that, two large safety pins, and that uh, slots into the the uh, sort of the area on the front of that bag. We also have a uh, fishing float and a hook disgorger. Now I've seen lots of people with fishing kits in their survival tins, in their survival bags uh, and they only ever have two or three hooks and they never have one of these, a fish disgorger, a uh, hook disgorger. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get the hook out before you gut the fish. Don't lose your hooks, makes it, uh, you know, you've got more hooks, depends how long you're out in the wild. Ten hooks may last you ten fish or it may last you a thousand fish if you've got one of those. Uh, also in there is just a sharpie marker, uh, just for writing notes on yourself, leaving messages on walls, anything you want. Also in there we have a knife. It's just a solid knife. It's one piece. Um, one piece. The tan goes right to the end. Wrapped in paracord, uh, paracord lanyard on it, and uh, just a tape uh, sheath, just to um, you know, protect the blade and protect the bag from the blade itself. And I said they all go in the front cover on the core kit. Um, now we're going to work through some of the items that are in the core kit. First of all, a bottle cap. Um, I keep this in there because, I mean, it only has really one use in this kit and um, you could probably find one of these laying about, but it is, you can use it actually as a whistle. <coughs> and, you know, I keep that in there. Uh, a lighter. Uh, when the kit is all zipped up and closed, this lays on top of the marker pen and everything. It's just a simple um, slingshot for um, hunting and maybe birds or squirrels, you know, protecting yourself if you need to. Uh, I have a lock knife, um, quite a short blade, but because it's a lock knife, you can't carry that on your person on a, in a day to day. I uh, also have another smaller lock knife there, once again you can't carry that and I have a bigger open L number 12 it's really rusty and dirty you know the, the tip's broken off but it's incredibly sharp it's a good knife um, although you know they are a folding knife with a wooden handle they are quite strong they're, uh, they're a very good knife and they've got a locking ring on them to stop the blade slipping out uh, I have a folding shovel from the pound shop, really, it's not for you know entrenching or anything. It's for maybe uh, digging up roots, digging up worms, insects, anything if you know you need to eat them. Also, um, dig you know latrines, um, just small ones. Uh, now we're going to go to this row up here. Um, bottle of alcohol, hand sanitizer, two uses. Um, keep your hands clean. 
like that. Also, um, spray it on your firewood and just gives it that little bit of extra fuel to get it lit. Okay, and here I've got a uh, section of selection of tools. Now these probably aren't gonna be a lot of good to you um, in a woodland environment, but they may be of some use in an urban environment during civil unrest or, you know, if you come across a building somewhere you need to gain access to or some machinery that you want bits off of. Uh, first of all, just a little multi-tool here. It's a little bit rusty, it needs cleaning. Uh, with some Allen keys and a selection of screwdrivers on it. Uh, next item is a Phillips screwdriver that turns also into a flathead screwdriver. Um, this is a uh, tyre lever, actually. But I, you know, I thought it might be useful as like a small pry bar. Um, the hook on there may be useful for you know catching things out of something. Uh, a 150mm heavy duty adjustable spanner. A uh, roll of um, black electrical tape, quite a few uses for that. Uh, these two are uh, varying sizes of um, socket, taking bolts off of things. Um, a bike tool, you know, may come in use for it. it's got spanners, once again uh, sockets on it. Just wrapped with some string, just an another place to hold some string. So they're the tools I have here. Um, it's not a brilliant torch, I'm going to be replacing it because it runs on um, lithium batteries, which aren't cheap and you know they're a bit harder to come across. You know, should you be on it once again in an urban environment uh, and you need to replace the batteries, you know, you may be able to raid a Tesco's or something and get hold of some. Uh, it's quite bright though. Um, the lens has been taken out and replaced with, uh, with mesh so that you know you don't break the glass. But I know the glass can be useful for other things, but um, I just preferred the mesh on it. It's got a button on it, on and off, uh, so you can signal with it. Uh, here, a foil blanket. Um, I'm sure, most of you know the uses of those. Keep you warm. Um, you know, keep the heat in. Here we have a one person uh, rescue survival bag. Um, it's a bit like a big plastic sleeping bag. If you've never seen one, you get inside it, um, keeps the warmth in, keeps the wet off, keeps you visible. And that is just in a Ziploc sandwich bag uh, just to keep it you know, from unfolding in the bag. Also, the Ziploc bag itself, uh, you can use it to keep. Um, Maybe the tor torch in if it's raining, stop you know the rain getting on it, collecting water in it, uh, and anything else you might need a ziplock bag for. Uh, we have varying different sizes of cable ties, a couple of long ones, uh, and some other medium length ones. Great for just quickly you know zipping up a shelter, fixing a fit your backpack, anything. Um, this I just had left over from another project. I threw it in. It's a piece of elastic. May be useful for something for the room it takes up, it just got thrown in. Uh, there's some more sort of high strength uh, cord there. Uh, we have there six feet of paracord, and then we have these three items down here, which I will open up and talk about individually in a minute. We've got a commercial survival tin with some extra bits added to it. We've got my fire starting tin and my fishing kit. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna Stop the video again, I'll pack this lot away and then we'll work on unpacking these bits and we'll talk about the items in there. Uh, we'll speak to you in a minute. 